Now here is what we've done so far in a nice cleaned up version. Normally you don't need this level here, but just, just so you can see it. Pencil is fine, large sheet of graph paper, pencil and eraser. So what you did first, you started it shipping and you walked the process backwards. And you saw that there were six processes between receiving coils of steel and shipping to the customer. So you took your large sheet of graph paper, drew your line in the middle of that line, up and down, and put the boxes right up against that line. And you put labels on them. You put labels like stamping, spot weld one, spot weld two, assembly one, assembly two, and shipping. And underneath these boxes, you drew equivalent sized boxes called data boxes. And each of those boxes, you put CT equals, C slash O equals, U dash T slash T equals, time available, how many shifts. That's when you recorded that stuff. You also put nice little pictures in here of how many operators. Each of those boxes has one operator. So what you've basically done quickly here is you've taken your sheet of paper, cut it in half, drew these six boxes, and you left space between each of the boxes because you're going to need to put something in there. You're going to need to put a triangle in there. Triangle here, 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 and here. And what you're going to put underneath those triangles is or what we've taken and counted at this spot between assembly one and assembly two, we counted 1,200 left and 640 rights. Yeah, here we counted 1,600 left and 650 rights. Now, we also, in our meeting board managers in the boardroom, we found out that our customer, State Street Assembly, they order 18,400 pieces a month. 12,000 left and 6,400 right. They like to have like 20 light pieces in a tray. They work two shifts. They want shipments once a day. We found out our park supplier is Michigan Steel and they deliver 500 foot coils of steel and they ship Tuesdays and Thursdays. We also learned that internally, everything is controlled by the production control block up here. Who receives information, two types of information here. We got a 90, 60, 30 day forecast. And we get daily orders. And they send orders out to Michigan Steel to deliver this stuff. They have a six week forecast and a weekly forecast. And then they add something else in here. This little bitty box down here in the corner of production control is your material requirements planning. And from that, they give weekly schedules down to each and every one of those boxes on what they're supposed to be building. All based on the forecast, which we know from what we've learned so far in Lean are always wrong. They're just forecasts. Not bad, not bad guesses, but, but guesses nonetheless. So now then what we put together is the six boxes. We've got our inventory triangles, caution triangles, with the numbers of, of inventory we counted underneath each of those. We know who we're shipping to, where we're receiving material from, and how everything's being controlled. Gives you a pretty good picture on one order size. This is a double eight and a half by 11. And if I'm doing it, I like to have a bigger one than that. And I can reduce down. That pretty much describes the whole thing, doesn't it? Because we got the cycle time, the changeover times, we've got the up times, we've got the number of shifts, and down here we're gonna add in time available per shift. But we'll get to that here in a little bit. Let's add in our process control efficiency line across the bottom. That's a summary of what we've got here. And what that basically gives you is you add any place that you have materials being stored between processes, you have an up level. 
While we're processing, we have a down level, an up level, 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 a down level, and an up level. Now you see some numbers there, and but you don't know how they you, they came about. Well, the down levels is really simple. It's a cycle time for that process. Stamping, one second. Spot weld, 39 seconds. Spot one. Spot weld, two, 46 seconds. Assembly one, 62 seconds. Assembly two, 40 seconds. Now how do we get the numbers on these others? Oh, well. Inefficiency. No, well, that's inefficiency, it's waste, but the numbers actually come out what we do is we take this 18,400 parts per month that they order. We know they work, as does our company, 20 days a month. So we divide 18,400 parts per month by 20 to get the number of parts per day. And we get 920. So then we take this, some of this. Here we have, in this place, we have 4,600 lefts and 2,400 rights. Yeah, it goes up, that's uh, 7,000 parts. You divide that by 920 parts, and lo and behold, you're going to get 7.6 days. Here you just count the number of coils and know how much to use a day. And we got five coils here. We use one typically a day. That's five days. We do the same thing here. We have a 1,100 left and 600 right. Add them together and divide them by 920, and we get 1.8 days and so forth for the other inventory spot. So that's the reason we counted that stuff. Now then, what we do is we add everything on the up level and put it at that sum in here uh, in this box as production lead time. Voila, 23.6 days. That's the time from paying to getting paid. That's the time it takes a coil of steel here you start shipping product here and getting paid. 23.6 days. You add up all the bottom lines, through here, you get a whopping total processing time of 188 seconds. 188 seconds during 23.6 work days is all you do to add value to the process. And that's why if you divide the 188 seconds by the 23.6 days, you get less than 1% process control efficiency. Less than 1% of your effort or time in plant is adding value for the customer. Not, not atypical, guys. Not atypical at all. Any questions on that so far that you didn't understand from that? I don't know that's that that's a picture you got to know where you're starting before you can and ever have a chance to improve it that's what you walked into and that's how we got paying to getting paid or total processing time is 23.6 days inventory turns maybe 10 a year process control efficiency about 0.9 meaning 99 percent of the time the work whatever you do around this stuff is waste Customer doesn't want to pay for it. So, not a real flattering picture, but it's not unusual. Trust me, in my experience, it's not unusual. So, now, let's, let's start to work. Let's start to work, and let's go to the target condition. The future state value stream map. And we got some help there. If you turn back in that book a little bit further, um, a tab or two, you're going to see eight questions that they propose to help you develop a, there you go, things to look at. The first thing we have to do is determine the tech time, the rhythm of production, whatever you want to call it, but we call it tech time. And we'll get into all these in a little more detail. I just want to run through them first. Do we need a supermarket at shipping? We want to use continuous flow processing. That's make one, move one, make one, move one. We don't have all that inventory between processes, and it's a lot faster. If you took 10 pieces that had one hour tack time each, 
and you did all 10 of them here, had to go through three processes. All 10 of them here is 10 hours, then you shoved them over here, and then process two did them for 10 hours, and then process three did them for 10 hours. It'd take you 30 hours to get all 10 pieces through the process. 10, 10, and 10. And with continuous flow, you make one pass one, make one pass one. So what you're actually doing is while you're working on two, two is working on the first unit. When you're working on three, now both two is working on the second, and three is working on one. As you move that through the process, it only adds two hours to the process. You can get all 30 pieces through in a continuous flow process with the same one hour tech time in 12 hours. You just cut your processing time in half. Do we need other supermarkets to control the line? What process is the pacemaker process? How do we level production mixes? What is the pitch of the line? What process improvements do we need to make the line flow? That's a continuous flow, that's a CF line. Okay, so let's take my questions. What is the tax time? The tax time is the production time needed to meet the customer's product demand. So, tax time is available work time divided by customer demand. Well, the available time is eight hours per shift minus 40 minutes, half an hour for lunch, and 10 minutes for afternoon break. You multiply that all out, it comes out to 27,600 seconds per shift. The demand is 18,400 pieces per month, divided by 20 days per month, divided by two shifts per day. And we end up with 460 pieces per shift. Therefore, our tack time is the 27,600 seconds divided by the 460 pieces. Conveniently, for this exercise, 60 seconds per piece. So what that really means is a piece has to come off the end of each of your processes in that line, including the last process, every 60 seconds to satisfy the customer's demand. That's tech time. That's the rhythm of the line. The drum beat or whatever. Okay, so that's the first step. Second step, do we need a supermarket at shipping? And that question totally depends directly on how the customer wants the pieces delivered. Once a day, not once a minute. If he wants those parts delivered once a minute, no, we don't need a supermarket. We can just ship them as soon as they come offline. But he wants the shipments once a day. So therefore, yes, we need a supermarket. We need a finished good supermarket between assembly two and shipping. And at review the ordering history, never has there been more than 175% of a daily order in any one day. So we set the supermarket size for 200% or two days. Where can we continuously flow? Use continuous flow. Well, if you look back at the processes, hopefully you can see that we can continuously flow the two assembly processes and then the two spot weld processes. We can probably combine those together and get some savings. So let's just keep this question open for later consideration here. It'll come up again.